Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to the conversation today. I got a really cool topic for you guys that I want to get into. So you guys know that Kawhi Leonard is my favorite player, so I like to do a lot of videos about him. Kobe, unfortunately, was my favorite. Unfortunately, was unfortunately, uh, um, unfortunate, unpa um, untimely passing. He's my favorite player of all time. But Kawhi Leonard is currently active, so I like to talk about him and I follow the Clippers a lot. So in this video, the question is, can Kawhi Leonard and Paul George win multiple NBA championships together? That's the question that I want to get into this video. Now, let me just quickly say, I think that before Kawhi Leonard and Paul George decided to play together, I think this is the question that they asked themselves, right? We all know that Kawhi went to recruit Paul George from the Oklahoma City Thunder because he was already paired up with Russell Westbrook and at the time, Carmelo Anthony. So they had their kind of big three going on. So he had that sort of happening there. And Kawhi, from what I understood, seems to be a big game player. I think his only focus is winning championships and being a playoff player. Now, there's this sort of running joke in the NBA and sports fans seem to have, which is this thing of load management. Now, I think the whole concept of load management came when we're talking, at least we're talking about Kawhi Leonard. Now, let me just say other teams have been prevalent with glo uh, load management. If you look at Greg, Pop Greg Popovich and the Spurs, he was notorious for that. And it was a major game that he sat, that he sent home his star players. It was Tim Duncan, I think Tony Parker, and Mano Ginobili on a nationally televised game, I think against the Miami Heat. And the Spurs were fine for that. So that's something that's been inbred within the within the Spurs organization and Kawhi Leonard was you know drafted by that team and I think he sort of has that same philosophy now there's a running joke in the NBA which is simply Kawhi Leonard doesn't like to play basketball for those of you guys as sports fans I think what we need to do we need to start doing our research okay educate yourself on what's really happening in your mind why would someone not want to play basketball first of all that's unethical okay there's no it's like you, you, you don't go to work, but you expect to get a paycheck. If a person is not playing, there must be a medical reason. Okay, it turns out Kawhi Leonard actually has a reason why he doesn't play because of an issue that he has with a chronic injury in his knee. Now, I'm not going to do the research for you guys. I'm just going to tell you guys to go do the research on it. Because what happens is when you come and like, oh, this guy doesn't want to play back, you make yourself, you make yourself sound a little bit dumb because you're not doing the research. Go inform yourself and then make a comment. And I think a lot of people don't wanna do that. They just regurgitate what they hear other people say and then they post it in the comments and say, oh, that's the reason why no. I think that's the question Kawhi Leonard asked himself. Can I win with Paul George? And I think he must have come to the conclusion that Paul George has enough in him to be a good complement to what he already does to help him win multiple NBA championships. Now, we all know Kawhi Leonard is not a ball dominant player. If you watch Kobe, something that Kobe is very underrated for as a scorer, people think that Kobe Bryant was like this ball hog. But if you watch a lot of his offense, especially in his second championship run, Kobe was an amazing off the ball offensive player a lot of it had to do with him Kobe Bryant if you watch him play in this, those series against the Denver Nuggets the Houston Rockets when he was winning his back-to-back -back championships he was catching the ball on the move a lot of times Kobe Bryant knows how to score without the ball in his hand he, he's not like a dribble dribble dri although he can do that he can post you up and all of that but a lot of it was coming off of screens coming off of picks catching and shooting so Kobe Bryant was a very efficient scorer in that way and Kawhi Leonard has that same ability to play without the ball and be very, very effective. That's why you don't see him over dribbling. You don't see him like having such a high usage rate and he's written and which makes him really easy to play with. And that's the reason why him and Paul George mesh so well, because Paul George is also an excellent player that can catch and shoot. If you want, yes, he can break you down. He has the ball handling skills to do so. But a lot of times he's catching and shooting coming off the screens from the three point line uh, and the mid range and the elbow. He's I mean, he's really good at that. And he's also a really good spot up shooter, as is Kawhi. Now, I think both of these players evaluated each other's strengths and weaknesses and then said to themselves, OK, this is where I got your back. This is where I have you covered. And they also looked at their similarities to see if it would be a good blend to win for, for championship winning basketball. Now, you may say, how do we know that they will be able to sort of project into the future if they could be a team that could win multiple championships? You have to look at teams in the past that have had the same type of players with similar skill sets 
that won championships together. And you don't have to go too far than looking at Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Now, for you guys, I'm not saying Mike, Kawhi Leonard is Michael Jordan, and I'm, saying, I'm not saying that Paul George is Scottie Pippen. What we're looking at, we're trying to draw comparisons, okay? There were two great, you know, two really physical, strong wing players that could play defense. Both of them could shoot the ball really well. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard are extremely efficient. They're not ball dominant. They can play defense on all the way from the one, all the way up to the four, if need be. So they're very versatile defensively and offensively. And I think that that's something they can use. That that's something they can use interchangeably. They can switch on to the, I mean, if you look at the Clippers overall, their team, they can switch pretty much on anything. And if you look at the Chicago Bulls with Ron Harper, Michael Jordan, and Scottie Pippen spearheading your defense, and of course you had anchors in the deep in the paint, which can you know pr provide some rim protection, then you have something really special. Now the Clippers don't have a lot of rim you know rim defenders, which may be something they will address by the trade deadline or some other point. I don't know. I'm not. I don't work with with the Lake uh, with the Clippers. But nevertheless, they do have the nucleus to win. Now, let's look at the team overall. Currently, they rank in their top five in scoring with 115.5 points a game. In rebounding, they're actually the number two team in the league with 4.82 rebounds, which is really important for good defensive teams. Good defensive teams need to be able to rebound. And it's actually interesting if you think of the trade that the Houston Rockets just made by trading away Clint. Clint Capella to go, to, I mean, to just go all in on the small ball type of approach is really inter interesting that they decided to forfeit their size. And it's going to be interesting to see how they rebound as a team. Now, if you compare the Clippers and the Lakers, one would think, theoretically, you would think because the, the Lakers have more size, LeBron, Anthony Davis, JaVale McGee, and Dwight Howard, they have more, they have a lot of length. One would think that they would rebound the ball more, but rebounding, we all know, is a uh, rebound is, is an effort stat. It's, it's all about who wants it more, who's great. If you watch, I mean, you guys watch basketball, you see a lot, a lot of rebounding is all about blocking your man out, you know, getting good post position and skying up for the rebound. That's why you see someone like Patrick Beverly, I think when he, when the Clippers played the Lakers the last game, I think he had something like six or seven rebounds in that game for your point guard. And Patrick Beverly, we all know, is a dog. He has that go get it mentality. And I think that's why a lot of people, analysts, sports analysts, NBA players say that the Clippers are a team full of dogs that will get after you. They're not afraid to get in the mud and get their hands dirty and be chippy. And that's the reason why they're the number two team in all of basketball and rebounding behind the Milwaukee Bucks, who, who have length pretty much everywhere, coming from every you know, every every side of the court. Now, if we look at the numbers, if you look at Russell Westbrook and James Harden, one would think, okay, they wouldn't mesh well. And what kind of happens with Russell Westbrook and James Harden is that one night, one person has a good game, the other person's game suffers. You rarely see them have combination games with two of them do really well. This season, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard have had a, has had a game when both of them scored over 40 points together. Just imagine that for a second. Two players scoring 40 points together. Last time I saw something like that was in the NBA Finals. I think it was in 2016 when Kyrie Irving and LeBron James both put up 40 point games together, which, which and all of us know that Kyrie Irving and Paul and LeBron James were a good blend and they to the tune of winning an NBA championship against the Golden State Warriors. Now, if we look at Kawhi Leonard this season, he's averaging 20 some points a game, getting you about 7.5 rebounds and 5.3 assists, and all of his numbers are up across the board. If we look at his field goal percentage, he's shooting 46% from the floor, 37.3% from the three-point line, and he's actually shooting better from the three-point line than he is last, than he did last season, and his numbers were lower, so he's actually improved his three-point shooting tremendously. His free throw shooting is also up. His assists are up. So, I mean, his steals are up. Kawhi Leonard is having another career year. If we look at Paul George's stats, on the other hand, he's shooting, he's averaging 22.7 points a game, 6.1 rebounds, and four assists a game. He's shooting 43% from the floor, 40% from the three-point line, 90% from the free throw line. And, you know, he's getting you about 1.4 steals a game. Now, Paul George is also a clutch free throw shooter, which is something that's going to bode well for this duo, for this dynamic duo. So in late game situations, they're going to be able to walk up to the free throw line and be dependable. And I've seen 
uh, Kawhi Leonard end games with free throws, win games with free throws, and I've seen Paul George do the same. Bear in mind, this team has only lost with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. While they were playing together, they've only lost three times this entire season when they played together. And they just, they're just fresh off of a win against the Miami Heat, who are no joke as a team full of rough riders that can get after pretty much any team in the NBA. And they just went and beat that team. So in my estimation, the question is, can they win multiple championships together? I think that they can. I'm not going to give you guys like a, you know, I'm, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I think that this team has the ability to win multiple championships and multiple championships. I'm talking between two to three. I'm not talking about four, five, six, seven. I'm just talking between two to three, which is a realistic thing because the NBA is very competitive and you just don't get up and start winning championships unless you have something really special. If we're looking at the Western Conference and we have to project into the future, the teams that are really going to be a threat, you're talking about the Golden State Warriors went to Splash Brothers, Splash Brothers are back. And obviously that organization is a world-class organization. You have to look at maybe the Los Angeles Lakers for the next two, two, three years, probably what they have going on there. So I think that they have a healthy crop of um, of opponents to go through that with, for the next few seasons. Uh, obviously, you have the Houston Rockets there as well. But I think that they'll be able to compete with those teams and if they make the right moves. Remember, Jerry West is at the helm of that organization. He's the one that's advising them with all of their basketball decisions. And of course, you have Steve Ballmer, who has pretty much no limit on his credit card or in his account to spend. I think he'll spend whatever it takes. To, to get to put the team in a position that they need to be in the future to compete for multiple championships moving forward so this is my opinion i think yes they have what it takes to win multiple championships now what i want to know from you guys is do you agree with me do you think that this team ha has constructed and you know looking into the future based off of the, the management that they have behind them that they can do so or you think you may think otherwise whatever you think please let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section below again if you enjoyed the video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell to be notified all of our newest and hottest content comes out. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys a fantastic day. Peace.